The topic of lecture is methods of apical periodontitis diagnosis, examination of the patient's clinic, diagnosis, differential diagnosis of apical periodontitis. This lecture is very important because knowledge of clinical manifestation of various form of apical periodontitis allows to make a diagnosis properly and determine future treatment tactic. And the purpose of the lecture first to know the clinical manifestation of various form of apical periodontitis and to be able to perform differential diagnosis of acute and chronic forms of apical periodontitis. As for the plan of the lecture, first classification of apical periodontitis, second methods of apical periodontitis diagnosis, third acute periodontitis, fourth chronic periodontitis, and the last one differential diagnosis of apical periodontitis. Classification of periodontitis according to international classification of disease. All forms of periodontitis corresponds to the code K04 and it it is called diseases of pulp and periapical tissue, the same as pulpitis. K04, the whole group of periodontitis. And different types of periodontitis correspond to different codes. Code K04.4 matches to acute apical periodontitis of palpal origin. Next code K04.5 corresponds to the chronic apical periodontitis. Another name apical or periapical granuloma. Next code K04.6 is periapical abscess with sinus or dental or dental alveolar abscess without with sinus and k04.7 periapical abscess without sinus or dental or dental alveolar abscess without sinus and the last code we have to know k04.8 radicular cyst or apical periodontal periapical cyst. And also we have, we have another classification is clinical classification of apical periodontitis. According to this classification, all form of periodontitis has three types of curves. First, acute, second, chronic, and third, exacerbation. Acute periodontitis is divided in two phases. First phase of intoxication and the second one phase of exudation. Chronic periodontitis may be three types. First fibros, next granulatin and the last one granulomatosis. And the exacerbation of chronic periodontitis also may be of these three forms. Exacerbation, for example, of fibrous periodontitis or granulatin periodontitis or granulomatosis periodontitis. And each form of clinical in clinical classification according to the course matches to the classification with special code according to international classification of diseases. So acute periodontitis in phase of intoxication corresponds to the code K04.4, acute apical periodontitis as well as the second phase of acute periodontitis phase of exudation also matches 
to the same form according to the international classification of disease K04.4. As for chronic periodontitis, also different forms matches to the same code according to international classification of disease. And fibrous periodontitis, granulating periodontitis and granulomatosis periodontitis according to the international classification of disease has the same name, th same code K04.5 chronic apical periodontitis. But exacerbation of chronic periodontitis different forms of exacerbation has slightly different codes. So fibrous exacerbation of chronic fibrous periodontitis corresponds to the code K04.7. It is periapical abscess without sinus. Exacerbation of chronic granulating periodontitis corresponds to the different code K04.6 periapical abscess with sinus. And granulomatosis exacerbation of chronic granulomatosis periodontitis match to the same code as fibros ex as, as exacerbation of chronic fibros periodontitis code K04.7 periapical abscess without sinus. Acute periodontitis. It has two form, two phases. First phase of intoxication and as for pathological anatomy of this form it has picture of inflammatory hyperemia and also perivascular infiltrates and swelling of connective tissue. That's all as for pathological anatomy. And clinical manifestation of this phase, apical acute periodontitis, in the phase of intoxication. We provide both main methods of examination and additional methods. Main methods include complaints, anamnesis, and objective data inspection, probing, percussion, and palpation, as usual. During complaints, we find out the main complaint, it is pain. And as for characteristic of the pain, it is localized without irradiation. It has constant aging nature, which increases when biting. It's very important sign that the pain is constant and increase when biting. During anam anamnesis, we found out that the total duration is less than 48 hours. It may be one or two days, not more than two days. During inspection, we have to examine regional lymph nodes and they may be slightly enlarged and slightly painful. And inspecting oral cavity, we find deep carious cavity. During probing, it is painless, but during percussion, comparative vertical percussion gives slightly painful result and it may be increased periodontal sensitivity. Percussion more, more often slightly painful. During palpation, it may be in the area of, of the apex slightly painful or maybe painless. Additional methods. 
temperature test is painless, electroodonto diagnostic more than 100 microampere because of absence of leaf pulp. Pulp give, gives us result of electroodonto diagnostic, but during periodontitis pulp is dead, so electroodonto diagnostic will be more than 100 microampere. And urine X-ray, we may see K4 or K5 cavity. It may be deep carious cavity in the deep layers of dentin or carious cavity communicating with pulp, with pulp cavity. Next form. Acute apical periodontitis in the face of exudation. Pathological anatomy. It has heavy leukocyte infiltration in the periapical tissue and reactive inflammation, redness and swelling of component of the periodontium. Clinical manifestation of acute apical periodontitis in the face of exudation. Complaints also, the main complaint is pain. Characteristic of pain during the phase of exudation, it is localized, often with constant irradiation, very intense, which increases when biting or even touching and this is very important symptom which is called a symptom of growth tooth. Anamnesis the total duration is more than 48 hours. Patient has been more than two days. During inspection external inspection gives us a result of regional lymph nodes which are enlarged and painful. Sometimes patient has collateral soft tissue edema. Gum mucus in the area of the affected tooth is swollen, hyperemic and the transition fault may be smoothed. And looking at the tooth, we can see deep carious cavity. Probing is painless because of absence of leaf pulp. Percussion is sharply painful in any direction, when painful, very painful, sharply painful, vertical and horizontal percussion and palpation in the area of the apex also painful and probably create first tooth mobility due to infiltrate in the periapical tissue. It may be mobility, first grade. Additional methods. Temperature test is painless. Electroodonto diagnostic the same, more than 100 microampere. And radio diagnostic gives us result of K4 or maybe K5 cavity, deep carious cavity in the deep layers of dentin, and communicating carious cavity and pulp cavity. And in the bone we can see changes, first changes, loss of clarity of the spongy substance of bone pattern. Purulent exudate may spread from periodontal to the different directions, 
First, it may be maxillary sinus with development of sinusitis. Spongy substance of the bone ostitis and the under the periosteum it it is periosteitis in the soft tissue abscess or phlegmon and in the oral cavity through the root canal differential diagnosis of acute periodontitis in the intoxication phase. There are three diseases. It's acute diffuse pulpitis, acute periodontitis in the face of exudation, and also exacerbation of chronic gangrenous pulpitis. Three diseases which has the similar clinical picture and we have to no to differential to provide differential diagnosis during acute periodontitis in the face of intoxication with these diseases. Differential diagnosis of acute periodontitis in exudation phase more difficult and there are more diseases which has similar clinical picture. First it Acute periodontitis in the face of intoxication, the neighboring disease. Next, osteomyelitis. Also, exacerbation of chronic periodontitis has very similar picture. Acute maxillary sinusitis and exacerbation of chronic periodontitis. Chronic periodontitis. It is asymptomatic disease most often. It patient has no symptoms at all. The final diagnosis can be made after radiography, after characteristic of X-ray picture, where we can see some changes. Symptoms of chronic periodontitis uh, may be cyanotic mucus in the apical region, in the area of diseased tooth, inconvenience discomfort, or maybe palpation in the area of apex may show a slight soreness, not pain, but uh, some slight feelings from patient. Chronic fibrous periodontitis. Pathological anatomy is characterized by a decrease in cellular elements, blood vessels and growth of coarse fibrous tissue just in the apex of periodont periodontium. Clinical manifestation of chronic fibrous periodontitis and according to international classification of disease, which codes K04.5. Sometimes we it is very difficult to do this diagnosis without additional methods because because patient has no complaints at all. As for complaints, no complaints. As for objective data, the gun mucus in the area of the affected tissue is unchanged also. Or it may be cyanosis. And as for the tooth, we can see deep carious cavity. The bottom may be covered or may be opened. It's communicated with pulp cavity. Probing is painless, percussion is painless. No symptoms.
almost no symptoms during the main methods, no result from main methods of examination. As for additional method, temperature test is painless, electrodontal diagnosis more than 100, and during radio diagnostic we can see K5 cavity, it means carious cavity communicates with tooth cavity, and in the apex we can see expansion of periodontal gap in the apical region in the form of pointed cap. Compact plate of alveolus and cement of the root is preserved. Not changes, just expansion of periodontium. Sometimes hypercementosis like a type of drumstick. Chronic granulating periodontitis is not accompanied by general symptoms. However, it is an active process, so there may be sensation of the body with the phenomena on general intoxication, but it's not very often. As for pathological anatomy, there is destruction of bone and formation of granulation tissue with a large number of capillaries, fibroblasts, plasmacytes and leukocytes in the periapical tissue. Clinical manifestation of granulating periodontitis and it has the same code as a previous disease K04.5. The main methods during complaints several options. First, no complaints also, it may be feeling of heaviness, bursting, slight pain, vein, biting, but not uh, pain itself, just feeling of pain, and maybe presence of fistula. It patognomical sign, symptom of this form, chronic granulating periodontitis. During inspection, possible increase and soreness of regional lymph nodes. The gum mucus in the area of the affected tooth may be cyanotic, slightly painful, and fistula, we can see fistula with granulations or a scar. And as for the affected tooth, we can see carious cavity, which may communicate with the tooth cavity. Probing is painless. Percussion, more often painless, but rarely possible, weakly painful. But it corresponds to comparative percussion. More often it's painless. Additional methods. Temperature test gives us painless result. Electrodontal diagnosis the same, more than 100 microamperes. And radio diagnosis, we can see K5 cavity, communication carious cavity with tooth cavity, and changes in the bone. The focus of the bone Discharge, discharge in the area of root apex enlightenment with uneven contours, like flames. The compact plate of the bone is destroyed with a long curse, maybe resorption of cement and even dentin.
granulating sprouting into bone marrow spaces of the jaw form fistula in the gum in the oral and in x-ray picture we can see fistulas or it's called Coves fistula using good aperture point. It helps us to follow the direction where fistula is exactly. Next, chronic granulomatosis periodontitis. As for pathological anatomy, Against the background of destruction of bone tissue, a simple granuloma from 8 till 10 percent is formed. Granulation tissue bounded from the surrounding bone by a fibrous capsule. Epithelial granuloma contains strands of epithelial cells and lining. Localization of near root granulomas on upper jaw 63% of on lower jaw 37% in the area of molars 54% and in the region of premolars about 38%. Clinical manifestation of chronic granulomatosis periodontitis. The main methods of examination also may give us not the full result. There are several options of complaints. There may be no compla complaints like in the previous form and also feeling of heaviness, uh, maybe slight pain when biting, not pain, just feeling of pain and possible the presence of fistula, also it's possible. During inspection, external inspection, possible increase and soreness of regional lymph nodes, the gum mucus in the area of affected tooth may be cyanotic, slightly painful, and possible is fistula with granulation or a scar. Internal uh, inspection there may be carious cavity, it is deep carious cavity, which communicates with the tooth cavity. Probing is painless and also percussion is painless but very possible weekly painful comparative percussion. Comparative percussion may be weekly painful. Additional method temperature test also painless. Electrodonto diagnostic more than 100 microamperes. In X-ray picture we can see K5 cavity communication, carious cavity with tooth cavity and in the bone a focus of bone tissue, discharge enlargement with clear even contour around or oval in shape up to half of centimeter in size 0 0.5 centimeters differential diagnosis of chronic forms of periodontitis provides with following disease it may be between the clinical forms of chronic periodontitis for example chronic fibrous periodontitis, we have to differ from chronic
chronic granulomatosis and granulating periodontitis. And the main sign is X-ray picture according to radiograms. Also, we can differ chronic periodontitis from medium caries and from chronic gangrenous pulpitis. X-ray picture it helps us in any case during differential diagnosis. Picture of fibrous periodontitis, granulating periodontitis like a flames and round or oval focus of destruction during granulomatosis periodontitis. Exacerbation of chronic periodontitis. The clinic resembles the symptoms of acute periodontitis at the stage of exudation and radiologically the picture of chronic periodontitis. There is a blurring of the picture. The same. The exacerbation of chronic periodontitis has the same symptoms, symptoms as the acute periodontitis in the stage of exudation, in the phase of exudation. And the lecture is over. Thank you.